Time's up. Let's do this. We're in for a wild night. <laughs> Welcome, welcome, welcome everyone to the Born to be Wild listener series season six finals. We are down to the final match of the season in an epic showdown between Ken Ray and NHL NJ fan one. I am so excited to be here this morning with my Born to be Wild co-host Electric Sheep City and Schmoopy Daddy. Good morning, gentlemen. How are you, Sheep? Good morning. Good morning. Meowdy. Excitement abounds for this fantastic finals match. How about you, Schmoopy? Yeah, doing great. I've been up a little bit longer than you guys, so I feel a little bit fresher maybe, but uh, now super excited to see these guys square off. Yeah, this will be a really epic match, and and it has all come down to this. We have had now eight plus weeks uh, just uh, due to some balance changes and, and things getting extended a little bit, but this is the last match in our wild tournament here. For those of you who are not familiar, the Born to be Wild listener series is a uh, wild Hearthstone tournament series consisting of multiple weeks with different deck building challenges each week. Um, some based on uh, lore that we'll talk about in just a moment and some based off of challenges that we've come up with in conjunction with help from the community. And so let me quickly explain how this format works. Um, the Board of Wild listener series is played in the conquest format. So each week players submit four decks consisting of separate classes. Classes and deck lists are hidden until after the weekly submission deadline. Once classes and deck lists are revealed, players have an opportunity to review and ban one of their opponent's decks. Band selections are hidden until both players have submitted their bands, at which point they are revealed. In the conquest format, when a player wins with the deck, that player must then move on to a different deck. The losing player may switch decks, but is not required to do so. The victor is the first player to win matches with all three decks. All right, Sheep, can you please tell us about this week's lore and challenge? Absolutely. So the primary challenge for this week is Mega Highlander with no duplicates across all four decks. The second challenge is our lore element. So I'll kick it over to Goliath the Dwarf to kind of intro that uh, aspect. All right, here we go. After many years on the frozen throne, Bulvar Four Dragon's time as the Lich King came to an end when the Helm of Domination was destroyed by Sylvanas Windrunner, now a champion of the Lord of Eternal Torment known as the Jailer. Windrunner seized the helm and shattered it to open a way to the Shadowlands as part of her master plan to remake reality. While she and her master were ultimately stopped and the power of domination thwarted, with the helm gone, the power and title of the Lich King was no more. So for that secondary challenge, each deck must contain at least one of the following cards. Bulbar Four Dragon, Bulbar Fireblood, uh, High Lord Four Dragon, the Lich King, Sylvanas Windrunner, Sylvanas the Accused, and the Jailer. Those names should sound very familiar because they were each contained in that uh, lore segment. And other rules, Highlander cards are not allowed in ETC this week. They are allowed in, in the deck proper. So no Reno, Zeph, etc. within ETC. Additionally, if a card is in ETC's band, it cannot be used elsewhere in the lineup. So no duplicates across the entire lineup. So Mega Highlander, got to have the lore cards. Those are our challenges for this finals. So how did our contestants, our finalists, implement these challenges? Let's take a look at those deck lists. Absolutely. And so I think first, uh, if we're checking out, it looks like uh, Ken Ray's decks. Ken Ray went in with a, a really smart game plan this week, knowing that it's Mega Highlander, knowing that people like to build greed piles, like they want to build, you know, bring your Reno Priests. Uh, they want to bring, uh, you know, your, your, your Reno Druids. Um, brought four, aside from the Shaman, which has been banned, but, well, the decks that are left are all combo decks, pretty much. Um, you know, the, the Druid less so, but, you know, we've got a, a, a Mine slash Shellfish Warlock. We've got a Reno Quest Mage, which is on the border of being a meta deck right now. And we've got 
a druid that can go a couple different ways. Uh, you can He's running Lost in the Park. He's running the Astalor combo. Um, he's running the Jailer and Tony. So, like, there's a couple of different uh, little ways where that turns into a, a combo deck and can kind of punish some greed. Uh, the 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 Reno Mage looks really solid. Worth noting that the only potion of illusion, if he wants to go infinite, is inside of the ECT. Uh, but everything else is there. It looks looks pretty standard, and I really like his warlock just because. Again, flexibility in the combo. If he loses a combo piece, if let's say you know Naval Mine gets eaten by Mutanus or something, um, he's still got the shellfish to to back up there. So combo from Ken Ray. NHL on the other hand. Just gonna go and try and win with 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 tempo and value. We bring those that lineup up. Sweet. Uh, his shaman is also banned, so we're looking at a Reno lock. We're looking at a, uh, a Reno priest, and we're looking at a you know very similar to Kenray in a lot of ways. A Highlander druid. Mm -hmm. Worth noting that Kenray is actually running due process in his uh, versus um, you know the little bit of a little bit more of a heavier curve from. Um, from NHL, but he is rolling, running uh, both Jailer. He is running, uh, you know, Tony King of Pirates, and you know the other two decks look like standard, like let's win with tempo, let's play good cards, uh, kind of like Reno decks. And uh, and yeah, I think that's where, where we're kind of we're kind of poised. We're kind of poised with like tempo versus combo. I think is going to be the theme of this matchup. And I think if that's the case, I'm giving a slight edge to Ken Ray, but I haven't seen how well or how cleanly the combo decks play out. So um, oh, who knows? It's going to be a good finals. Yeah, it is. Excitement abounds to get into these matches. Good or this match, these games. So good luck to NHL and J Fan One and Ken Ray. Let the games begin. All right. Well, they can queue up as soon as they are ready. I'm so excited to be here. These are both phenomenal players. And so we are in for a treat this morning. Uh, whoever wins, like we're, we're uh, in for an absolute um, great show right now. Okay. looks like they are queuing up. So let's jump right in. Okay. Druid mirror to start. Very interesting. Feel the power of the wild world. Job's done. All right, so Kenray, of course, with the turn one play here. NHL and J fans' hand is a little clunky, um, but whenever it gets online, it is going to pop off. And seeing how clunky his hand was, drew a moonlit guidance, played it for that extra wild growth, ramp into the clunk. <laughs> So it'll be really interesting to watch and traditionally both these players playing super fast and so um it'll be it'll be a little bit tricky to to try to keep pace with them but uh, i'm very excited to be here yeah buddy and of course we're seeing the uh attack online for kenray which will then let him draw with spread the word yeah, Kenry's really pushing pressure early. Mm -hmm. In that lower curve, I think doing doing him a little bit of a service, and that he's got more stuff to do now. Though NHL, I think ramps here. Yeah, I think I think we probably see that. Job's done. And after this celestial alignment, I think you can start seeing NHL's deck kind of like take off and really push things. Yeah, that clunky hand not looking so clunky anymore at uh, eight mana. <laughs> it might start looking a little more clunky if Marty does drop that celestial alignment, <laughs> but only slightly clunky, obviously. The clunk will go away. Alignment. Yeah, there it is. 
what do you think you do first? You think you drop down the Anixia and just sort of say uh, next turn for Marty and just sort of say, hey, you know, d pay attention to me, deal with this. What do you got? It's definitely it's probably. It, yeah, it's definitely different now that Celestial Alignment doesn't hit both players, so. He's still going to have to contend with, like, a lot of attack over on Kenry's board. Kenry's about to have kind of an awkward hand in the moment, because this side quest is going to proc, and uh, he's either going to get... Okay, so he's going to get... Okay, there you go. It's going to get less awkward. He gets the owl down, I think. I don't think he wants to get rid of this, you know, this coin. He seems to be really trying to save it. Yeah, no, nothing really to point into, I don't think. I'm already going for the tempo, Elixia. Honestly, that uh, that Alex draws a pickup is a pretty good one. Mm -hmm. Now, if I'm Kenray, we answer with seeds to board lock NHL, maybe? Yeah. And we don't really care about- we, we're not going to bother killing any of these seeds, I would be shocked. I think he just wants to just press the issue and go, go, go. Go face for four, get Guff the Tough in hand. Now, do you go for attack here, or do you go for armor? Oh, yeah. I think you probably have to go for armor, but... The attack's not enough to win it, I don't think, so... No, I'm just thinking, like, if I'm NHL, like, I have to apply some pressure, right? Maybe this is enough? Buying my time with armor? That's fine. Can Kenray can't keep him locked forever? You know, you know, NHL does have... We've seen the seeds already, and he has both Jailer in hand. So... Just a little bit of space... Uh, you know, two board spaces, and I don't know if Kenray can actually remove both Jailer now. I have to look about both lists a little bit more closely. But yeah, with that Poison Seeds out. Right, he's that... used the Poison Seeds. That that could be that could be a path to victory for NHL pretty quick. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm not Henry really would not seeing... be able to remove it. Oh, yeah, he would not be able to remove it. So, uh, kind of a spooky moment where it'd be really easy if I was Kenray to feel pretty confident here, just sort of jam Guff down, and that would be it. That would be uh, GG's to, to NHL. Mm -hmm. And a shocking twist of fate. Time goes short. Kenray being really cautious here. Feels like. Draw it up, push two, gain two armor. And holding on to that Guff the Tough is paying off. Yeah, NHL can can uh, get up to no good if um, he's able to clear the board a little bit and having the entire board locked is, is really kind of putting him in a in a tough situation right now. Yeah, this is really clever from 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 Ken Ray, kind of being patient. Um, but I don't know. I don't know if he's going to be able to keep it up forever because it's we're getting to a point where uh, he's either got to find a way to take out NHL. Yeah, I mean, this this has to win. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Oh, he's smart. Kenray knows. Kenray smells it. Trying to draw into that combo. He is on a bit of a clock. Yeah. Going for he armor is. for the other half of that solar eclipsed branching paths there. Having that sustain. And that being said... He's got Astalor in his hand. 
he needs guff, right? Like he needs he needs guff bad at this point. And once he gets guff, he's gonna feel pretty good. Mm -hmm. He's got he's got a, he's got a new Bracon. <laughs> he's just like, okay, where's Brain? Where's Guff? Where's Brain? Where's Guff? And he can play like Maybe one card in his hand here if he really wants to keep him board locked, but I think it's going to get its... You can see Kenray kind of fingering through his cards, getting a little bit antsy. Yeah, he does only have nine cards in hand, so he doesn't have to completely dump hand. But again, as we, as we kind of outlined, like the minute he does, he loses, right? Mm -hmm. So he's got to make... The next cards that he plays, wherever they are, um, they're going to have to win him the game. What a great first match, man. This is tense. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that, that buys him so much time. Ooh. Don't do it, Ken, right? I mean, the Hold possibility strong. of the Jailer... And Marty wouldn't be able to trade into anything on Kenray's board. He he would like free himself up. Oh, uh, that would be clever. He's stuck at ten mana forever, though. Right. He was considering it. Anubrakhan only gives five armor, so Kenray would he not. Plays, uh, this he can do it. The harmonic moon, it. yeah. Recently nerfed, by the way. And the Jailer! Wow! wow. <laughs> Stone Cold Sephonkin. Well done, sir. Wow, what a tense match. Yeah, Ooh. oh my gosh! <laughs> Does Marty get there with seeds, maybe? Does that concede too soon? No, that that was that was lethal he, on Kenray's board. Marty couldn't trade into anything because of the but immune. If, but what if he played seeds to make treons instead of giant things? Um, it, was he still dead? Still I, was, I didn't. I, okay, I believe so he was still he dead. Yeah. Man, crazy first game. Yeah, those are some big brain plays there. You can tell the caliber of players that we have here based on just how that match went. All right, they're queuing up into game two. Henry's on his mind lock. Marty is on. Staying on that druid. Feel the power of the wild world. He's got a lot of ramp. Whatever cards he gets in hand are going to be playable pretty quick. And I imagine Kenray is going to want Rod, and like, that's it. But I, I'm not sure. I haven't, you know, Mindlock is one of those, one of those uh, decks that I find very hard to play. Much harder than uh, Mechathune. Mm -hmm. Combo is, uh, the combo is quicker, but it's a little bit, it's a little bit weaker into aggro, and the pieces are a little less flexible. I imagine we see a trade here, but... Could also potentially see the armor vendor. I wouldn't be surprised by either one. At some point, the armor vendor is unplayable, right? Because, like, you don't want to give NHL fan armor. True. For the combo turn. So, uh, yeah, you, you could definitely make a case for that. And we see Going early up. ramp. Yep, pointing at wild growth makes a lot of sense. Probably Especially into the seedsman next turn. 100%, 100%. This is a tricky matchup for an HL fan because he, he doesn't have a good way to apply early pressure into one of these combo decks. So, um, you know, just getting his stuff online ASAP so he can start Applying pressure is going to be important, so having the two ramp cards early, uh, definitely a big help. Okay. 
The flower child's going to be really interesting. Where's the flower child pull for Marty out off the bat? Flower Child's gonna pull Anixia and Jailer next turn. Worth noting that Kenray stack also runs Plague of Flames, so if if we see that come down and it doesn't clear like a Jailer both, that can be another win condition for Marty in this situation. Um, kind of like let's 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 bait the the Plague of Flames and see if we can get it. Mm hmm. <laughs> Alex number one. <laughs> no, sorry, Alex number two. Alex number two. Yeah, uh, with that uh, draw tag. into armor, we may very well see the Summer Flower Child come down next turn. Instrument attack, we're going to see a. Uh... Yeah, that's that's gonna get unplayable soon. Mm-hmm. Now, I don't see any of the combo pieces for Kenray yet in hand, aside from the Tamsin. We all exist in harmony. Wolf, nice. And jailer. jailer. Ooh, okay. Celestial alignment next turn. Can he can he pop off? Does he pop off? Probably. I think Maybe. I think he might. Some point. We, Some point. we see the the floop scloop in hand as well as the flipper friends for the rebound the turn after the the celestial alignment. He's not facing a ton of pressure. He's facing even less pressure. <laughs> oh, Kenray! Kenray's not giving him stuff to floop seeds into. He's just saying forget this. Yeah, very heads up play by Kenray. No surprises there. Yeah, that celestial alignment. He's considering he his options, but it's no time like the present to get that started. Now, if Kenray can't combo soon ish, this is going to get unreasonable pretty quick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, like we're talking like both Jailers and, and Dragon Queen Alexstrasza's and Anixia's and oh by the way uh, I've got Alex Strand you know double Alex Life Binders and just, just sort of like gets absurd quick. So. Right. Yeah they both sort of put each other on the clock here. Henry at 10 cards in hand. He's trying to make hand space yeah. Mm-hmm. The can space, and he's trying not to give him anything for a floop for a floop turn. He's he's a, I'm not going to say terrified of a floop turn, but he's very aware of it. Um, and and, and how kind of like at in this position, uh, it almost becomes a an I win if he's not careful. Mm hmm. Dumping that hand a bit. It's only gonna get one free dragon from this. And it's another gonna one that fill up the hand. rest of his hand. Yeah, oh no. Yeah. Well he only draws one from it. It's fine. Yeah. Yeah, Alex to ever so slightly increase the odds that he mills one of his um, spells rather than one of the the more. Henry's gonna try and go. Henry should yeah. try and get there. Did not find the mine. His odds were decent to find it. Yeah. 
That hysteria, Kenray could uh, selfish shellfish into hysteria here to clear the entire board and have a NHL NJ fan mill a lot of cards. Flex for the entitled customer to clean things up a bit. That nourish mill is not what NHL and JFan wanted to see. That said, he's going to gain some mana this way instead. Seeds. Mm -hmm. Malagos for draw. Or is he just going to jail her both now? He very well could. Kenray can pretty much get to the end of his deck and find the Plague of Flames with the uh, impending catastrophe. But we're getting to a point where, and this is where making, uh, I find making... Oh, smart. Okay, beat me now, he's saying. Because I've got more bolts where that comes from. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> He's got both of them. <laughs> Unlucky. <laughs> so Kenry can get to the end of his deck Actually, right here. He's got more than two if he uh, <laughs> if he uses uh, flute. <laughs> that he does. He's got to get to the end of his deck. He can use the imps and the impending catastrophe to get there. Then he's got to kill the mine. Then he's got to play... Um, then he's got to play out the uh, <laughs> he's got to play out the the Tamsin's phylactery. He has to copy the Tamsin's phylactery. Like it's just it's gonna be it's gonna be tough. Oh, here we go. Oh no. Oh, what is he going for? We're gonna be rich. Maybe he's gonna go for the shellfish angle. Mm, yeah. I would have thought he would have gone for mine, but. Well, with, with Marty's deck being empty, Kenray probably just has the, the heads up that that'll just be a quicker demise. Right. Of course, does need to Plague of Flames away the bull for that to happen. But there are, there are ways that he can do that thing. Say impending right here, right? Oh, he's gonna kill a fish. Yeah. Shellfish. Can I just say I love that Bolf is now a a pseudo meta card right now. <laughs> Not, but he kind of is. This uh -huh. is gonna be a lot of damage from Kenry. That it is. I think we're guaranteed to have all the imps. Yep. Oh yeah. And phylactery coming, or not phylactery? Well, yes, phylactery, and Don't the plague much. of flames. So much. All right, let's see what number we hit. Be here a while. <laughs> <laughs> How music. long can this go on? <laughs> that's a that's a that's gonna be a big negative number. Yep. Oh my gosh. <laughs> well, I'm pretty sure just like one phylactery was lethal, but like you always play the second. Yeah. <laughs> just to make sure. <laughs> just to, just to, just to inflict psychological damage. Like, this is just. Ooh. <laughs> 26, 27. Oh my gosh. 28. <laughs> <laughs> 
Stop hitting him! <laughs> Stop hitting yourself! Stop hitting yourself! 512, casually. <laughs> oh, that was intense. I'm on, I'm on mobile, I'm still behind. I think he, he, Marty just exploded for me. Just <laughs> <laughs> yeah, wow. One deck left for Kenray. That deck, of course, being that Highlander Mage. NHL and J fan one knows what he's queuing into, so since he's isolated that, going for that Druid run back. Feel the power of the wild world. This is going to be really tough for the Druid. Um, he's got to he's got to pull off both Jailer, or he's got to um, he's got to apply pressure. It, it's this is going to be this is a tough matchup. I, I kind of highlighted like. In my mind's eye, I, I wasn't participating obviously this week, but in practice, one of the decks that I did build was a Highlander Quest Mage, just because it's perfect into these kind of decks where it's like, well, I'm forced to play a Greed Pile, um, and and it's just just very good into these kind of decks. Mm -hmm. With that, Alex draws the Life Binder uh, get for Marty in the Mulligan. Uh, that oh, Breath of Dreams me. will ramp. Yeah, he's got the early Henry ramp. has Biscuit and Savara and Bran. Like, this quest can get done real quick. Oh, yeah. He needs one more spell, really. Do you tempo the Bran? He's thinking about it. He is considering it. Lex nah. not to, and I don't blame him. He's not under any pressure. No. Flower Child? Yep. We all exist in Discounts the Alex Straza and the Kazakasan. I don't think you want another evocation. Magic? Yeah, I've heard of it. No, I don't think so either. Seedsman for draw and ramp. And since um Henry is running, um, I call him Row Row. Is it Ron Math? How do we spell it? Row Math. Row Math. Row Ro Math. There we go. Um, you do have to be somewhat cognizant of what spells if you do discover. Um, mm -hmm. Because he's going to repeat all the spells. And so if you do want to go infinite, you don't want, like, you know, board clears for. Uh, you need to they'll take out your zero mana minions. Right, your little, your little one one minutes. Mm -hmm. You want to continue to potion those buddies up? Jordan in chat making a good, uh, making a good point. Uh, NHL has to win the next three matches anyway. Might as well cue the worst matchup. Yeah. And this, this has to be probably, I think, the worst matchup of the bunch. We're not playing for points, we're playing for keeps. <laughs> it's true. Here we go, we're gonna see the uh, Biscuit, and then we're gonna see the Savara. Wow. This is the masterclass on, again, how you speed run this quest. <clears throat> I don't think he can do it, but there are some times you pull off this play and you can play the quest reward in the same turn. It's just, it's filthy. <laughs> can I miss an attack with the Varden? Perhaps. I think, I think you're right. Ooh, here comes a big swing play. NHL fan is really close to doing like uh yeah. Oh, I think he maybe might be lethal. Uh, yeah, ju just lethal here with that Elise into double Alex Straza the Life Binder. That'll very get cool. Very that cool. Win. Very cool. Keep it going.
The druid gets the dub against the mage. The probably the hardest one for yeah. Marty to actually pick up that went against the mage so he's gotta fe be feeling really confident in his play and his execution and, and in that win so that he can maybe pull off the reverse sweep here still gonna be tough i'm looking now he's gonna probably have to win with tempo there's a little bit of uh he's going with the warlock there's a little bit more disruption in this warlock he can symphony of sins and delete a fair amount of his deck um, there is a Ticketus in here, um, there's a Dirty Rat, so this is gonna be, like, I think, the opposite, this is probably the, the strongest of Marty's decks, uh, into a Highlander Quest Mage, I would think, of his remaining decks between this and the Priest. Not the opening hand that Marty wants to see, but that ticket is that, that disruption. Is yeah. I think it's an insta uh, coin C devil gigafin next turn for Marty. I think he's going to try and apply as much pressure as possible. Mm -hmm. Get the ice block up. But maybe not. Yeah, here it comes. Yeah. Here we go. Job's done. Let's Pretty go. much instantly. Good reach, and Schmoopy. It corrupts, it. it corrupts the tickets, too, which I wasn't sure if it would because it costs health, but it does. So there you go. Super relevant. That ticketist can come down on six. Still a few turns away. <laughs> Dirty Rat right now would pull Mailbox Dancer and Crush Claw Enforcer. Neither of those are necessarily. I think he. I think Kenray wanted his uh, his Civ, or he wanted his Queen Ashara. Um, so I, I I think the Crush Claw is actually a mm -hmm. pretty good hit. Uh, it, it's Marty's a good hit gonna, for sure. Yeah, I think Marty's probably gonna. I'd assume. Zola the rat. Mm -hmm. Maybe save for a maybe save for a brand rat. I don't know. I don't know if he'd insta rat right away. Couldn't tempo the brand. It's gonna say you don't have a way to kill this brand. Now we have caster vision. We've seen we've seen Kenry already send out a bunch of stuff to kill the. Uh, they so kill the Gigafen, so. With Caster Vision, we do see the Frost Nova into Double Ray of Frost to deal with that brand. If Kenray yeah. elects to go that route. Otherwise, he's going to, he's about to lose 10 cards, I think. I think he's going to, Marty's just going to jam ticket us and be like, this is going to hit something. Mm hmm. I don't see anything in Kenry's hand where, let's say he does get an extra turn. Like, I'm not saying it's not impossible for him to complete the quest at this point, if if he loses 10 cards from his deck. But it's going to be hard for him to, once completing the quest, um, putting up enough pressure where it's lethal. Oof, this is going to get we'll Brand ticket is, oh, wow. That brand sticking. Ashar is gone. Raw math is gone. No loses, more tickets. <laughs> okay. Well, it's not impossible yet. I think Kenry still has Zeph in the deck, right? Or did we lose Zeph? Four cards I left in the deck. So we have not seen that uh, Zeph get burned. So okay. Zeph, Zeph is, is still. A yeah. Especially if he, gets, if he completes the quest on like a miracle esque turn and then um gets like a a fat eddy from zeph that can be a way through henry not panicking nor should he no freezing the board getting sustained looking for his answers 
now he's realizing I wish I killed this man. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Both both Ray of Frost were still there. Never mind. I think Zola Rat looks really good here. Maybe Ray's dead. See if you get the brand back. I don't know. I could raise dead Reno. What is taking so long? Yeah. Good order. Oh, there's that brand back. There's the brand, so I mean it's gonna be rat forever. Um Marty's low enough though. Yeah, he does have Reno. Yeah, he just jams Reno here. I was gonna say he's low enough. It was a little spooky where like even maybe a a, a garden gets there. Seem to have lost the surface. Now, what is he <laughs> looking for in his deck? I, I kind of liked that hand. I might not have thrown away that hand, but Marty's a lot better than me, so there's, there's a reason he did it. I think he's looking for something. Oh, unironically, the Lich King might be really good here. At some point. Mm-hmm. Because, like, he... Like, Henry needs, like something to win with after he after he completes this quest who knows what secrets will uncover Ooh, that's right feel groove Could complete it now. I might, I might hold on. Again, I might, I might try to go for something like a. Um, I might go, try to go for like a like a Zeph into Eddie kind of play. But I'm, I'm not sure. West was completed, but of course not played. You see Kazakasan. Part one was I wanna say Mystic Wool. I could I couldn't see. He snap picked it so quick. <laughs> Deal five damage, gain seven armor. Well, with the Romath gone, there's really not a good way for Kenry to have this infinite loop, so if yeah. he can pop block, we'll uh, really put on the pressure. Well, and with that infinite loop gone, it looks like Marty's electing to uh, deal with the board. <laughs> Leave behind a 22 attack on his side of the board. Kenry's only at nine. Of course, again, we have Caster Vision. We know that that Frost Nova is in hand. Magic. I'll take a little fatigue here. Cards. Okay, okay. I see what Kenry's going for. He wants to take as many turns in a row as possible. So he's going to stick a Time Warp in the Savara. Mmm. And he's going to hope that that's enough. Um, but I think he's at such a low health total, the fatigue might get to him. This is going to be tight. Yeah, it really is. Time to wash away the filth. Right. Time warp. Zef could give uh, Zef could give heal. That's, that's a good point. We got from chat. Yeah. Two. Uh Can I going to four mana into Zef? 
options are Sea Giant, Shadow Word Death, and Betrayal. Not what Kenry was looking for, I don't think. Well, Sea Giant is a way to win. And of course, that Couple brand stuck. Giants. Okay. Two Giants. I think he really needed some healing though. Well, you know what? He can play Varden. He can gain he can gain a, a, a little bit of time here. And you That's know what? He's true. played He's played so many time warps. I mean it's gonna be it's gonna be gratuitous. He's got twenty-six attack. Varden's gonna cast twice here if he does cast it, and he's got the time warp. Yeah, what he's not wanting to see is an arcane intellect. Lorden can attack for some reason. Okay, that doesn't do anything. Don't freeze a giant. Oh, oh there's one AI. And that AI. Ugh. Yep. He played around it so well, too. He did. <laughs> got there yeah he played to his outs you got, got to do what you have to to stay alive for the next turn did what he could to make that a reality unfortunately that arcane intellect he played so many time warps too that it was very 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 probable that a uh, time warp gets repeated there and he actually he, that's it yeah man all right we, Game we're five. going to five. <laughs> Taram versus Queen Ashara. All imperfections must be swept away. I am not worthy of this audience. Well, I think Marty's pretty happy to see uh, Raza and Anduin in a starting hand in a final round. Oh yeah. Got Raza, he's got uh, Anduin. Henry finds an Evo. Um, this gets a little goofy pretty quick. <laughs> As it is, just pulling uh just pulling uh, the crush claw uh, with quest in hand. You never want to repeat the quest, so you're happy it's not a Savara. But to get the crush claw online for early draw, I can say as a as a cough cough quest mage enjoyer, um it's <laughs> it's a big deal. Absolutely. Okay, Electing to get the biscuit online, bank the mana. Both guys playing pretty quick. They've done this matchup before. This is not their first rodeo. <laughs> Crush Claw Enforcer gets that Shavara. This Seance can do some damage too at some point if Marty draws. Maybe like a Theotard. I think probably Theotard would be the thing that you'd really want to look for right now. Yeah, and of course, Seance can also go onto opponent minions, which is relevant. Kenray getting that Potion of Illusion into hand. Notably, that potion, of course, will we'll replay with Romath, but also if he plays it uh, while Shavar is still banking, he could get another one. Another one. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> As if I could be cleverer. Okay, Kenray up to eight cards in hand. Electing to clean up that Raza. Hello, Void Touch Attendant. How are you doing today? <laughs> so the seance on the Void Touch Attendant gets really silly when you have uh, Anduin up. So he's going to be able to... Marty's going to be able to apply a lot of pressure, especially with the Behemoth probably coming down on Curve. Uh, yeah, he's Kenry's going to have to get get pretty busy, but he's got Bran. 
And he's got coins, and he's got the Savara. So and he's let's got get the busy. Mana biscuit. Yep. Let's get busy. Oh my gosh, wow. <laughs> Get more coins and or mana biscuits into that potion of illusion next. Ah, also the archaeologist. He's Holding got a to really... Up oh, Theo. Yeah, I was going to say, he has got to... He's got to be really careful about Theotar here, because Theotar is how he loses. Ignoring, of course, um... Ignoring, of course, the, uh... The combo. Yeah, the combo itself, right? So he's... Kenry is, Kenry is sort of, right now, playing around Theotar. He doesn't want AI to be the last spell that ends up completing this quest, I think, because he's probably not going to have enough mana, or possibly even hand space, in order to, uh to handle it. At some point, you might even Finley both AIs back into the, like, you've got the potion, unfortunately. You don't want to do it, but this hand's getting kind of unruly. He's got a lot of draw and no space. Yeah, and the I danger wonder being... Yeah, if you're Kenry, you just, yeah, play the potion to get it into the pool. Dump hand a little bit so that you can set up a Finley to <laughs> get something else. <laughs> doesn't really have a lot of great stuff to snag here. Sir Fenley might honestly be the most relevant uh, card that Marty could snag. Easy Najak, just sent, ship that back. We don't need that. Yeah. Okay, he snagged the biscuit. Okay, I, I yeah, the, I don't, I don't hate that, especially because it's Anduin fuel, right? Like. Mm-hmm. Seance. Seance. Another Theo, one. Take another shot at it. Yeah, it's gonna take another shot at it. Another one. This is his best chance, right? Like going into yeah. it, this is his this is his best opportunity to disrupt Kenray and stop him from doing what he wants to do. If I'm yeah. Kenray, I still don't think I'm super comfortable. No. But at the same time, I know that none of the cards I have in hand, I really care about. He is going to complete it with that arcane intellect. Okay. Yeah, might as well, right? And that way, when he if he top decks, um, you know, Ron Math, he can just rip it. And he did, in fact. Nope, that is a Lich King, not a Ron Math. My bad. So Sir Finley will probably come down. I don't know if you do. I don't think you want to Feast risk it with Theo in hand, right? Like I don't, I think Finley probably next turn with 10 mana. If that makes sense. I think doing it mm. now is a little, a little bit. Um, a little spooky. sus. I think it's a little sus, but I, you know, I don't hate it. Yeah, dropping the Lich King's a good idea, right? Yeah. Okay, deal with this big idiot. You're almost forcing Marty to... I don't know if he will, but you almost force him to Shadow Reaper Endo in here if he wants to. It's a perfectly good excuse to. Mm -hmm. Seems like as Kenry, good a time as any. Kenry will probably find Ron Math if he Finleys. It's, mm -hmm. it's getting... Yeah. By Cathedral? Jack. Okay. Yeah, I think you I think you you insta Finley and like unless Ron Math is exactly like in the perfect spot, you always hit him. Even if he's not, that's kind of fine. Like NHL hasn't put on enough pressure to uh, make Kenray super spooked right now. Mana giant down. See what the rest of the draw is if that there's Ron Math. Bro. There it is. There's Roro. Now, I don't think Ruh -ruh. this is... 
It is finished. You win. What a series. What a series. That was incredible. <laughs> well played to both. Holy moly. <laughs> wow. GG's Kenray. And you know what? Um, just like a nice little story. This is the second time Kenray's been in the finals. And uh, I think he was bitterly disappointed last time he was here. Uh, it was a hard fought match, but you know, maybe um, that just his opportunity to get some redemption. I, I just, you know, I'm really, really happy for him. I, I, I'm, I, I love getting NHL fan too, right? Like, I mean, these are, these okay. are our friends that are playing, um, but you know, GG's to Ken Ray and GG's to NHL. Incredible matches. Yeah. Yeah. The skill level, of both these players, absolutely top notch. Guys, I actually have to hop off. I can't do the call afterwards. Uh, I got to go meet hat, but, um, I'll, I'll send my best to the competitors and have a good call. Thank you, sir. All right. Well, we will hop over Sans Schmoopy. Have fun with that. <laughs> we will jump over to the post-show interview with Ken Ray presently. Congratulations, Ken Ray. That was an intense match. Uh, first off, how are you feeling? How was that? Like, <laughs> tell me what you want to say first, because that was incredible. Uh, I actually went in quite confident to go to the match because, like, if you look at the decks, uh, my lineup was basically like a combo lineup, and mm -hmm. he had like a control lineup, and he was running like some very anti aggro cards. So like, I felt very confident going in, but after he after he like played ticketers in that warlock game, I got started getting nervous at the end, and like. Uh, the final game was like pretty close on how on like the quest completion and everything. So. Yeah, well played, and I think at, like you had made it all the way to the finals previously, so I'm sure you are very happy to have uh, redemption, right? Congratulations. Uh, yeah, thanks. Uh, the previous times they were like, I mean, I, I I'm not I wasn't that like uh, I didn't feel that bad after like losing the finals the last time you made because. It was still fun. Yeah, I still like like the time there, but it just feels good to like finally win at this time. Absolutely. So, um, you you mentioned that you know you brought a, a combo lineup. Uh, what was going through your head that had that lineup be uh, what you brought? Obviously, it paid off, but but uh, what made you go that route? Uh, firstly, I'm I'm like read the Reno deck, so like, I love playing Reno decks. So yeah. I was like, what do I not like playing as a Reno deck? I was like, oh, I don't like playing Quest Mage. I don't like cards like uh, Dual Process. I don't like fighting Mind Lock. So you just put all those in all the decks. And uh, Shaman is basically the anti Reno Reno deck. So it's like, basically, the whole lineup is to target the that kind of deck. So. Nice. So targeting what you don't like to see whenever you're playing Reno, that makes so much sense. Um, I, okay, probably my favorite uh, end to one of the, <laughs> the games today was that phylactery warlock, that casual, what was it, like 500 512. <laughs> 12 damage <laughs> when you uh made the decision to uh discard the uh mine and go with the the fatigue route um uh you know I, not being a a super big uh phylactery <laughs> player myself um wh why did you choose that particular route again obviously paid off you if he had gained a ton of armor then you would have definitely got around that um so yeah uh, first okay I didn't know how the interaction would work first, so I thought that if I pick Plague and both, uh, the both would tank all the damage, so mm -hmm. I thought mine wouldn't work. So um, the way I win is that um, Plague kills it, and the fatigue from that turn, he'll draw one, and the one will kill him. Um, so like, I should put Shellfish there, but it turns out that it worked like the normal way, so he took like 500 damage, so I don't think the, the choice matters. That makes a lot of sense though. Um making sure that no funky interactions would mess with that when there um makes complete sense that was so intense <laughs> yeah wow that was and it was incredible to watch so your shaman was 
band. Uh, is there anything that you want to highlight in your shaman deck as well? Shaman, nothing much. It's basically like normal shaman. You have Bully, uh, Mutanus, the Murloc combo. Uh, Framestar is a cool card. But it's just to target Reno at the end of the day. So nothing special. Though. Yeah, that makes sense. Well, is there um, anyone that, that you would like to give a particular shout out to? Is there uh, anything else that you would like to highlight? This is your your time to shine. Uh, I want to shout out Max D and Slide. Uh, throughout the whole season, they like, um, even though like they were like, eliminated out and everything, they still like helped like make decks together with Scrim and like bounce ideas off each other. And Slide actually bought me like 30 packs to like craft a deck, so that was quite nice. Oh, that's great. That's very nice. Absolutely. So shout outs to Maxi and Slight for sure. Um, so I think that we're kind of winding down our post-show interview. Is there anything else that you would like to say, um, you know, and any socials you'd like to plug before uh, we wrap it up? Uh, no particular like plugs, but I just want to like um, maybe like feedback for the whole season. Um, I think in some weeks, um, it's been known also as well, that the rules were like really scuffed and unclear so those that weren't really in the discord they were like they summed the wrong decks or like they didn't know that certain restrictions were were like fit in or did not fit in like in week two when they were like the the chance summon a minion and i remember in that week a lot of players either summed the wrong decks or like they just didn't summon because it was really confusing and another feedback they all like to say is that um the story the the law throughout all the weeks uh, where like it requires undead. Well, I think it's quite cool that there's like a story throughout the weeks. I think some is overlooked. Um, in week three, um, we are required to bring six reborn minions, but also six undead minions. But but out of all the reborn minions in the game, like ninety five percent are undead. So I I don't know whether it's like intended, but I think there's a bit of overlap like for the sake of the story. That is good feedback. Thank you. Yeah, this season was particularly difficult. I think to to come up with like matching lore elements, so it was a little bit of a stretch sometimes. I think uh, sometimes the sets lend themselves a little bit better to to challenges, and and we kind of struggled a little bit this time. But all right, well, Nate, uh, I will defer to you for wrap up uh, discussion, uh, wrap up uh, words. <laughs> yeah i mean i just i really appreciate you letting us stream your match and, and thank you for participating we'll reach out through the discord for prizes um but yeah i just want to say uh congratulations again this is a, a huge victory and um we will uh we'll get this posted to youtube later and um get you uh immortalized up on the website as well as the season six champion of the born to wild listener series so thank you again for participating thank you everyone for joining us here live and watching the streamed match and uh if you're interested in wild hearthstone we do have a wild podcast called born to be wild that we uh push out live every friday evening here on this channel and um you can find it all over uh youtube and all the other podcast apps born to be wild so thank you again everybody really appreciate your time and we will see you next time on another episode of born to be Wild.